ever found, and you're my friend. Hi, this is Cricket talking to you. Hey guys, this is Allison Venezio from Allison's Written Words for uh, The Retroist. A few weeks ago, I had actually done two uh, separate articles that were related to the Cricut doll. Um, the first one was actually about the instruction and care tape that came with the doll. And the other one was actually, she was part of a larger article about uh, various 80s talking dolls. Um, I actually was digging around, um, I was cleaning out a drawer, and I actually had been looking specifically for uh, this little pamphlet um, that came with my Cricut doll back in 1986, and I had assumed that I had actually uh, had thrown it out um, about nine years ago. I actually moved, and I was cleaning out an end table that had um, clothing and the tapes and stuff uh, for my Cricut doll in it um, that I had kept long after I had gotten rid of the doll, which was back in, uh, I think, 1997. Um, but I actually had managed to keep this. I took it out of the end table that I had kept it in and put it in a plastic bag with a few other things, and I actually found the plastic bag in a drawer that I was cleaning out um, a little over a week ago. Uh, this first opportunity I actually have to uh, film some of this, but um, I thought maybe I would share some of the stuff with you. This was the uh, Cricut uh, healthcare plan. Um, Playmates Toys actually put this in the uh, box with uh, Cricut along with the two tapes and the doll itself. Um, and this was just like instructions on how to take care of Cricut. Um, just this part of it actually is um, how you... Uh, go about sending the doll back. Um, they tell you, of course, you call the 800 number first and they try to, you know, see if you can fix the problem with, you know, calling this 800 number, which, by the way, I have not tried it, so I don't know actually if it still works or not. Um, and just how to go about uh, sending her back uh, to this Cricket's Care Center. Uh, the Care Center actually was like a doll hospital type of place and you sent your Cricut doll there if there was a problem that you couldn't fix at home, you know, by calling the 800 number, just fixing, you know, maybe having a parent try to, you know, clean the cassette player or, you know, just care for the doll itself and see what happens. Because, um, you know, uh, not me specifically because I was really gentle with mine, but some kids, you know, they try to feed their doll, you know, food or give them a haircut or wash their hair, do something that they're really not supposed to be doing. Um, definitely was not one of those kids. I used to carry that doll around like a, a bit, like she was a baby, and she was pretty heavy um, when I got her. So, uh, you know, being that I was four at the time. Um, so this actually just has the information on how to send back the doll, and um, I like uh, this little folder. Uh, the bottom says about uh, to read the folder, make sure kids know how to take care of Cricut, and then send in the warranty card and keep the folder. So we kept this, obviously, from... I got the doll in 1986. Um, let's take a look inside. Oh, this was where the warranty card um, actually was uh, attached. So we sent in the warranty card, and um, I'm actually going to show you what we got as a result of sending it in. So this is just how to um, actually care for the doll, like to put in her... you know, how to put in her batteries, um, just tells you to put in four uh, C batteries and one 9-volt battery, um, exactly as they were shown. Um, I actually remember how to put in. I used to put in the batteries myself, believe it or not, after I had learned how to do it. Um, I love in the instruction tape, and I think I emphasized it a few times in the instruction tape article that I wrote on Retroist, that she recommends using alkaline batteries and I mean like seriously pronunciates alkaline and it kind of like drove it into your head that you should only use alkaline I guess maybe they were better performing for this type of toy and um, you know just how to insert the cassette tape and um, you know the tape side up of course and um, you know you open the cassette drawer or the cassette drawer slowly and you know and then how to push the buttons and, uh, you know, what button is what. Um, I think 
This was the red button. And I think this was, see, they don't have the colors listed, but I think this was the red button. I believe that was the yellow button, the blue button, and the green button. Um, she had a headphone jack. I always found that really strange. I never actually tried, I never tried it in all the years that I had the doll, because I had the doll for 10 years, 11 years, something like that. And I never actually tried this headphone jack. You know, I didn't have, like, I had headphones, but I never actually used them with her. And that, that could have been kind of interesting to try, but, you know, never did actually attempt that. So it just explains what the buttons are and what each one does. And I don't know if the volume had a color, because volume wheel had a color, because they never said if it did or not. Um, over on this page, just, you know, health tips about, like, her, about, you know, keeping her clean and, you know, what to not bring near her, what she doesn't like. She doesn't like, they emphasize dirt, heat, and water. <laughs> so, as long as you kept her out of those three things, she was fine. Um, getting a little bit closer here. Uh, beauty tips about how to style her hair, that you, you know, what you can use, what you can't use on her hair. And, uh... I, li I like that they say no hairspray. You know, everybody back then used Aquanet. So can you, ma uh, you can just imagine like a bunch of kids probably thinking that it was okay to spray her hair with Aquanet. And then um, the doctor, what the doctor says, you know, about like what you can do to try to fix her. And um, I, I could never drive home the importance of this enough. Uh, this actually did happen to me when I was uh, about six or seven. With my doll, um, I ran down the batteries, actually, by leaving, I think it was the blue button pressed. I, I tell the story a lot, but I don't remember the exact. And I've written it down a few times in a few different articles. And I think it was the blue button. And I remember it actually being on throughout the night and the motor running down very quickly. And it just, it, the sound was very weird. And I remember it scaring the crap out of me back then. And, uh... Yeah, not liking that doll too much for a while there. So when, back to the warranty card, when you actually mailed the warranty card um, back to the address in Ohio, um, oh, just, that's the 90-day warranty and everything, and that's actually where the care center was in Hamilton, Ohio. I uh, looked it up, but there's actually a printing office. There's, and there's uh, two custom cabinet uh um, businesses actually in this address now. Um, I found the information I'll have to share, but I never actually tried the phone numbers, just looked at, went so far as to look up the address, um, you know, uh, as to where this care center was. And I'm curious as to how long the care center actually was in existence. I don't think this doll had anything made for it past 1988 or 1989. Depending. I don't know. I'm not sure how Playmates kept this one on the market. But yeah, that was the address for the care center. So if you sent in the warranty, you got back this little card. I'll show you those other little things that came aside. You know, it's the same thing with the, uh, the what the doctor says uh, about, you know, her care. And then this was an ad. Um... For, and I guess at the time, and I know they had more outfits and tapes. Um, there were six outfits and tapes. I actually had that outfit. That was uh, indoor playtime. I think that was the birthday one. And then the books. They had the activity book and tape sets. And they really, there really weren't as many of these, but there was a lot more of the clothing and tape sets. Um, it just tells you, uh, you know, that you can get these and uh, the copyright, 1986. Um, inside uh, was the, this actually fell out because, you know, it's about 30 years old. Uh, you know, this is the label that you would put on the um, package if you were to send it back to the care center. Um, so I guess that's probably a serial number. And again, the address, which I looked up. And uh, you didn't need postage. You, I mean, you had to pay, you know, send the doll back, you know, if it was, uh, was it again, uh, you know, the cost of return postage if it was uh, after 90 days but under two years. Uh, you know, so then you just, I guess, had to indicate how much you paid um, for it. Um, 
there was another thing that was actually on this page. And of course, again, they remind you about this 800 number. And I, I got to check out this 800 number, see actually what it um goes to now, if it even still exists. Google wasn't turning up much. Um, but on this side, and I just covered up some information because there was an old address on there that I actually haven't lived at since 1988. Uh, <laughs> To give you an idea of you know how long ago I had this doll, it was a few addresses ago, but um, the had an address on there. Uh, there's some holes actually in the card. Um, so while some of the address was actually torn up by these holes, um, I figured I was still covered up anyway. But obviously my name hasn't changed. Um, there, uh, I guess that was the ID number for the. Oh yeah, right there, it matches. Yeah, that's the ID number for the doll. And since we bought it in 1986, I'm, or I got it, it was a present in 1986, it was purchased in 1986, I'm going to say that's probably the expiration date for the, uh, the card itself. Um, but that was the Care Center card, and that just, again, drove home the point of calling them first, and that's the cricket emblem. You see that a few times in a few different places. But yeah, this is pretty interesting um i'm not gonna say it's my greatest find it's probably one of my oldest finds that i have uh in my collection of stuff again i had actually said as i had said at the beginning of the tape of the recording i almost said tape i've been saying tape a lot i guess i don't know because i was reading the thing that says tape on there but um i had actually believed I had lost this, or not lost it, but threw it out while I was in the process of cleaning out a drawer uh, for moving. And I was just recently cleaning it out again because I just wanted to get rid of a few things and just throw some stuff out that didn't need to be in this one particular drawer. And I had transferred stuff from a drawer that was in a net table that I was getting rid of and moved it to a dresser drawer that I was keeping for when we moved. And I guess I had put it in a plastic bag with a few other things that were in that drawer and I had saved it, which is pretty good considering that this is, you know, over 30 years old and I, or 30 years old and I've actually saved it, you know, for that long and it's in really good condition for an old instruction manual and I think somewhere and I'm going to have to look for it because I know I have my uh, Teddy Rocksman tapes at some point I'll actually have to break out some of that stuff and uh, show you my Teddy Rockspin uh, things, but I think I actually still have the original instruction manual for that doll too in the bottom of the, um, we had like a container, it had a handle on it, it was like it's a travel container and it had um, Teddy Rockspin tapes and books in it and I think there's a manual in that, uh, you know, thing too, the original manual for Teddy Rockspin and of course it's in pretty good condition. We, we were pretty gentle on everything, obviously, except for, um, you know, as I was showing you the care card, uh, cause there's some holes in it. And my brother actually had been practicing his writing right on the care center card, which, you know, he signed it. If he thought he was signing it, he actually signed it on the wrong spot because you're supposed to sign right there. But we obviously never did that and we never had to send her back. She worked great for the amount of time that I had her and she was still working when I actually sent her off to a donation bin. I'm actually still a little upset about that. I don't have anything, any of the stuff anymore. I had the doll until the mid nineties and sent her off to the donation bin. I kept for some reason the clothes and the tape. So I actually sent this doll off with nothing, nothing for anybody to use. And you know, back then, you know, so there wasn't really eBay or anything, but, um, you know, so I sent this doll off, I think, with one tape and then kept everything else. And I had, I think, like four outfits and four or five outfits. And I had a book and tape and I had a sleeping bag and I had the director's chair. And, you know, so I actually had saved all that stuff until 2008 when I moved. And I actually got rid of all of it finally because I just didn't have enough room in, you know, dresser drawers for all this stuff. In addition to other things that I actually, like, needed to have. But, um, this was obviously one of the things I kept. Um, and like I said, I found it in a plastic bag with an uh, instruction manual for an old DVD player that I had at the time that I actually have since gotten rid of. And, um, this was in there and I'm actually really glad I kept this because this is probably a really good related article, uh, you know, video for an article, um, about the health care, uh, plan in Cricket's Care Center. But, um, I'll make a 
article to go with this also on Vretorus, but I just thought I really needed to show off how, you know, interesting this information is. And again, you know, the address I checked, it's a uh, cab two different uh, cabinetry places and a print shop uh, actually in the building um, where the care center was in Hamilton, Ohio. Um, yeah, so I think that's it, but yeah, just wanted to show you guys, wanted to show you, uh, obviously there was some interest after I had, on Retroist after I had put up, you know, two, you know, an article and I had expanded on that a little bit, but thought it was just another interesting little tidbit of my, uh, my childhood and my cricket doll and her chef days, um, which, you know, sadly came to an end a while ago. Uh, if I had the room, I definitely would have kept her, you know, I probably would actually still have her today because I, you know, now these things are worth a little bit more money and she worked really well when I still had her, you know, I guess as long as, cause I kept the batteries, you know, changed and I didn't abuse, you know, the doll, like, you know, throw her around, you know, or over play with her. I used to like, just, she sat in the chair when I, in her director's chair when I listened to her and she, you know, was, you know, not like jostled around, but, uh, you know, pretty good for a little kid with a toy, with a expensive, heavy toy like that. But, you know, it's quite the investment. Um, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking, you know, it's kind of boring, but I hope you enjoyed looking at this, uh, you know, little uh, tidbit of uh, my Cricut doll owning past. Um, I'm going to put some pictures. I actually took some photos of the information of the booklet and I'll put those up on uh, some of those up on Retroist as well. Um, if you'd like to contact me or visit my blog, you can actually, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, all the information is listed in the description below and all the information is listed at the end of the video as well. Um, you can contact me uh, through my blog, Allison's Written Words, or on Twitter at Allison Geeks Out, A-L-L-I-S-O-N, Geeks Out, all one word. Thank you.